Welcome to the Sunday morning streaming broadcast of Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. Give honor to God today and we just bless God for our, our being able to, to come together on this Sunday morning and to uh, worship in the word together. We praise God for uh, just uh, having a, a, a blessed week uh, watching over us and also and I'm sure he's wa watched over you. And uh, I just want to tell you that uh, I just wanted to thank you for your prayers. I, I feel the strength of your prayers and I praise God for you. And we're praying for you all also in, in Jesus name. So let's get started with our, our uh, service on this morning. We're going to start out as usual with a word of prayer and then we'll go straight into the word of God teaching for today father in jesus name thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you matchless god omnipotent god bless we bless you we praise you we glorify you we magnify you we exalt you we extol you hallelujah tremendous prince of peace prince of glory prince of um uh, of the worlds we bless you and magnify you thank you so much Thank you today for another opportunity. Thank you today for your people. Thank you today for your word. Thank you today for this uh, uh, first day of the week uh, that we customarily come to, to praise and to worship and to teach. We ask you to give us wisdom on today, dear God. Help us to, uh, to know your ways. Help us to understand the times and the seasons. We pray that you would help somebody, heal somebody, deliver somebody, God, set somebody free. Give somebody into the eternal knowledge of their identity, destroying their ignorance forever. Lord, we thank you and we give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In Jesus name we pray. We say amen and amen. Well, once again, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord. We're so uh, blessed to to uh, be together this morning. I, I feel I feel so blessed, and I hope you do the same. Don't forget to, as we are uh, uh, worshiping together in the Word of God, to uh, like the messages and subscribe to the channel and. Uh, so that we can know, praise God, that, that that you're there and that we can know that you're being blessed. Many of you tell me you're there, but <laughs> I don't see you <laughs> in the like or the subscribe spaces and whatnot. Either way or the other, uh, we feel like we are servants uh, of Christ as you as you are. And we will continue to do what uh, 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 to, to operate in the doors that the Lord has presented before us. So let's get started this morning. I want to talk to you about a subject matter, praise God, that that's a very popular one in the Old Testament. It's very, and it's it's also a very popular one in the New Testament. But uh, I, I don't know if uh, I think in the last, for me, the last ten years or so, I've heard more and more people talk about it, teach about it. And uh, uh, more and more people uh, be interested in learning about it. And I want to talk about the season of Passover, the season of the Passover. Now, most of the time we start talking about this around the season of Easter, what we call uh, uh, Easter. And um, I, I'm, I'm still going to be talking about that season. Uh, uh, but it, it, if you would go back to the Old Testament and the the Hebrews or the Jewish people that celebrate the Passover in the in the Old Testament, what you find out is that uh, they didn't celebrate Easter. They celebrated something called the, the Passover. And I want to talk a little bit about that this morning. I uh, talk about the Passover and, it, Passover and its New Testament application to us today. Uh, the Passover and its New Testament application to us today. Now, I won't be talking a lot about uh, how to celebrate or how the Hebrews, the Jews, celebrated the Passover in the Old Testament. In other words, when they came in and they ate the um, the Seder meal, and um, and they and as Jews still do today, 
in in the celebration of this festival called the Passover. Now they the the the, the they celebrate the, the Passover, or say the Hebrews or Jews celebrate Passover because uh, in the Old Testament it was commanded that this was a tradition that you would never forget, that you would never cease to uh, commemorate. And so they, uh, uh, I see the thing, I'm a Hebrew, I'm a Jew, I'm a Christian. <laughs> we never forget that word that God said, said don't forget uh, to commemorate the Passover. The first uh, the time the Passover was kept, I'm going to read a few scriptures so we can kind of just uh, uh, lay the foundation for, or, or for these ideas of the Passover. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what the Passover is and uh, what the Passover was and, and what the Passover for us is today. And then we're going to look prophetically about the prophetic uh, nature of Passover in the lives of the believer. And that's going to be very important because it, that the word needs to have an application. We need to be able to uh, apply the word to us. That's relationship with God. When God is saying something, I heard somebody say, it's, it's one thing to believe in God, but it's another thing to believe God. And I thought that was an awesome comment that was made. Believing in God, they, they were saying that even the devils believe in God, but uh, it's the believer, the, the person that believes God, that is the one that is the workman that needed not to be ashamed of uh, what he's saying and doing in the earth realm. All right, so uh, the Passover uh, uh, of our day. Uh, our text, our theme, uh, where we're going. I look at Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going to go over to verse 27. And this is, this, is, uh, this is a New Testament verse that was first written in the Old Testament, but I'm just going to pick it up out of the New Testament instead of going in the Old Testament and pick it up. But it's Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. He says, by faith, he forsook Egypt. Talking about Moses. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Powerful words. Verse 28. Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And in these two verses are uh, 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 the, the, the teachings of what the Passover uh, was to, to, to fulfill or what the Passover uh, would be for. Uh, and that will give you a brief, brief uh word on it the passover came god gave moses a word uh to deliver them out of slavery when they were in egypt god gave them a word god spoke to moses the leader and the bible says moses did not fear the face of the king but moses endured or moses uh looked uh, uh he 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 he, he, he prevailed to see the one who was invisible, the God of, 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 of their people. And Moses, was, uh, Moses heard from God and Moses gave the mandate to the people. What did Moses hear? Moses heard that I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. This was a, uh, a, this particular uh, night or time that God had heard from, what God, that Moses was hearing from God was uh, uh, during a time when God was about to wrap it all up. He says, now, this is, I'm going to send one final sign, and this sign is going to be a plague. He said, this sign is going to come to Egypt, and it's going it's, it, to, this sign is going to be devastating. And he says, first of all, Moses, I'm going to give you the remedy. I'm going to give you the, 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 a word that will cause what I'm about to do or what's about to be released to pass over you and to pass over your house, to pass over your children, 
uh, I'm going to give you that th- 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 a word concerning that. And that word was kill a lamb, take the blood and apply it to the the do- door p- the door pillows, door posts and the lentils. And as you take that, kill that lamb, apply that blood. Then the uh, I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to allow the deaf angel to pass through Egypt. And that deaf angel is going to pass over every house that has that blood upon it and uh, that blood upon the lentils and upon the doorposts. And uh, that house shall be saved. On the other hand, every house that uh, doesn't, which is the house of, uh, in this case, Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the unbeliever. Pharaoh was the one who had uh, 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 was looking to keep these children of Israel as slaves, keep them in bondage, keep them uh, from go- from from the worship of their own God, and so uh, 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 the, the God was saying to Moses, "I'm going to put an end to that. The day of your deliverance has come." The time of your deliverance has has appeared. And he says, you just need to follow my instruction. And this this deaf angel that's about to be released will pass over your houses, your houses. Now, we've all seen uh, most of us have seen if you hadn't read it in the Old Testament Bible, you've seen it in the. Uh, on television, the Ten Commandments. I have a friend, <laughs> and she can almost quote the movie, quote the movie uh, uh, word for word. I, I know many scenes she can. <laughs> it's interesting, and uh, but but the point is, is that uh, we most of us have seen the Ten Commandments, and that's the story of how God led this people out of slavery into freedom and uh, uh and then god says now this particular uh feat this particular uh, uh 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 thing that i'm about to do i want you to commemorate it now there were other things that that they were asked to do on that just before they leave they were to eat unleavened bread and uh, 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 this was also would end up being a commemoration. But today we're going to talk about just this Passover. And then we, if we want to look at that's the Old Testament uh, understanding of what the Passover was. Now, the people of the Hebrews, the Israel, they celebrated like that uh, as they left Egypt, as they left slavery, as they left bondage. But when they uh, got to their destination and they commemorated, they commemorated, they commemorated, praise God, uh, on the night that they left Egypt, they celebrated. But but they celebrated long after they left Egypt, even when they got into the new land. And even today, you'll find that uh, Jewish peoples all over the world, uh, Hebrew peoples all over the world, are celebrating, will be celebrating the Passover. Passover will be coming up around uh, April, mid-April, and it will coincide with our Easter holidays. Uh, uh, um, And the two two are alike, but very different. (laughs) Uh, And we won't get into that today. And look, if you look over at 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, purge out therefore the old leaven, that you might be a new lump, as ye are un as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Now here's a word that teaches us uh, that's that that is specifically relegated to the New Testament. And it teaches us a little different. I remember in the book of Isaiah. God says, I will do a new thing uh, in the 43rd chapter of of Isaiah, where God says, remember not, you know, the former things. He says, because I'm going to do a new thing. So in the New Testament, uh, it's a little different than it was in the Old Testament. The, the, the Old Testament uh, gives us 
the, the, the teaching that we should commemorate the, 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 the deliverance from slavery. I believe that we call that the song of Moses. We should commemorate our deliverance from slavery in that, uh, uh, in that God calls uh, the final thing that he did in Egypt was this death angel, and God calls that death angel to pass over us, the great miracle of the Passover, the mighty hand of God <clears throat> that, that said it's time for you to be delivered. And uh, 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 what's about to come, it's coming to deliver you finally. I don't care if he said, uh, I won't let you go in the past. I don't care if he said, uh, uh, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you forever in the past. I don't care. God's saying, he said, this one will, will, will cause you to move into your freedom. And so the commemoration of the great hand of God of protection, the great Holy Spirit of God, the great angel of God protecting the people, he says, you commemorate this. You commemorate this. There were other things that came to other plagues that came to uh, uh, Egypt and the Pharaoh's uh, land. Uh, but the, but those things, the Pharaoh never let the people go uh, when the, 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 the first of the plagues came. And uh, it was it was not until this last plague, uh, which was the deaf angel. Uh, being released and it would come into the houses of everyone that did not apply the blood or did not uh, follow, the, follow the instruction of God. It would come into the house and it would snatch, it would kill the firstborn. Even the Pharaoh lost his firstborn, according to the Bible, in this particular, uh, in this particular incident. Now, this is a very powerful teaching. I, I, I'm not going to teach on that. Maybe God will give me the grace. <clears throat> I learned a teaching while I was in Africa uh, uh, concerning the firstborn and how that, how, how powerful uh, 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 the, the entrance of, the interest of Satan is to snatch our firstborn. Uh, it is it is the favor and the blessing of God, uh, according to Scripture, that which God set up. The firstborn receives the inheritance of the house. So, if Satan can stop the firstborn, then the then he feels like he has control of the inheritance of the house, which is another teaching for another time. But it it, it falls in line. With uh, uh, this this death angel, God says, "I'm not I'm not just going to destroy uh, the bondage of slavery." He says, "I'm going to destroy it forever. If it rises again, he says, I'll smash it again, uh, because the firstborn deliverance is going to lay the groundwork for an eternal deliverance." The application of this blood that you're doing now is going to lay the foundation for an eternal deliverance of you, your house, and your firstborn, which consequently means the inheritance of God from generation to generation will continue to move on. Wow, I'm getting so excited. I'm about to get into some teaching that I, I really didn't want to get into today. So let me just keep talking about this Passover. And uh, uh, because I could spend a week just talking about it. But uh, if we got into the firstborn, which is a deliverance message. It's a deliverance message. And we all need that deliverance message. Uh, whether your firstborn is male, female, whether your firstborn is adopted, whether your firstborn, it doesn't matter. Uh, the, the firstborn if, 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 in, in the rights of, of the things of God is the inheritor. Now, unless God changes it up some, because God has in the past changed things up. Uh, you know, uh, Isaac and Ishmael, Jacob and Esau, uh, uh, where God, uh, uh, God changed, God, <laughs> like the kids said, God flipped the script, <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead of the firstborn, 
getting the blessing. It was the younger that got the blessing. You really can't put God in a box. You have to just keep following him because there's it, it, just no way to put him in a box. The strategic workings of God, uh, uh, his mind, he said, my ways are not like your ways. He says, my, uh, he says, my ways are, are far higher than your ways. So it's important to just continue to follow God. Okay, so I want to look at a place in the New Testament now where we're going to see a concept of something that is a Passover. And it, 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 it and, and that's what I, I want to emphasize on today is that Christ, uh, as we read in 1 Corinthians 5 and 7, uh, purge out there for the old leaven that you may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. That's dealing with unleavened bread. And then it says, for even Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. So here we see as Christians, as apostolic and prophetic people, Christ is our Passover. So now, there, now, now there's, there's believers in this and there's those who don't believe in it. There's some who do Passover who are still commemorating the coming out of Egypt. And that's a, if, that, if that's, that's all you can believe as you uh, go before God the Father and you, you, you hadn't yet come to this place where you understand that uh, who this Christ Jesus is. Uh, if, if that's where you are, I, I understand where you are. And whatnot. Uh, 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 but here the scripture teaches by the Apostle Paul that Christ is that new thing Isaiah was talking about. Behold, I will do a new thing. Don't remember the former things. He says, I will do a new thing. Christ, our Passover. Christ is become our Passover. And through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the blood of Christ, we get a Passover through the blood of Jesus Christ. We get a Passover. Now I consider this as one of the most important uh, teachings of the new Testament. One of them, uh, especially as it comes to our preservation, uh, the Lord, our living shepherd, the one who uh, watches over him. Remember David in the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. See, uh, uh, if yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Surely goodness and mercy is going to follow me all the days of my life. Can you see that? Uh, can you see the, the grace of the preservation and the protection of, of the shepherd? Uh, that he has for his for his sheep and for his flock for his pasture that's who and when we start talking about the modern day passover uh the modern day efficacy of passover why would anyone still celebrate passover why does a christian celebrate passover now we may join in with a hebrew celebration we may join in with a, the israeli uh, celebration. Uh, however, the ultimate, the ultimate of the Passover, the reason God gave them a word of commemoration, not just to remember the former, God was giving them a commemoration so that they would have a foundation for the new thing that was coming. It's very difficult. It's not difficult, but it's, 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 it's easier to believe the new thing if you believe the old thing, if you believe that God delivered a people from slavery, if you believe that God released a spirit, he didn't release an army of people that raised them up like Gideon and, and within the ranks of Moses. And they went and attacked Egypt with spears and swords and, got, and gained the victory. That's not how he did it, though he could have done it that way. He didn't do it that way. He raised up. Uh, he released, there was a spiritual release. Wow, I felt that. There was a spiritual release that was released that, uh, 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 that God is saying to us today that if you can believe that he did it then, 
then no matter what takes place in the earth, there's a power, there's a, there's, there, there, there's a glory that God can release to bring us out of those bondages, bring us out to bring us into places of deliverance. Now, I can hear the skeptic now saying, oh, Snooks, you're going to have to get up off your knees for this one because your God can't do this. Your God can't do that. Well, I'm sorry. I don't want to say I'm sorry because I'm not sorry. Uh, uh, I, 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 beg to par- I beg your pardon. There, in, in my opinion or in the opinion of the Christian, God can do this. God can still deliver. God can still bring us out. All right, so um, uh, I want to look at a Passover that I call the pass, Passover. Um, uh, well, I'll just say Passover for us today. Chap- Revelation chapter 9. And let me get over there. Revelation chapter 9. And I want to look at the uh, start at problem. Let's see. Start at the uh, first verse. Let's start at the first verse. And this 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 chapter is going to go into uh, what they call the trumpet angels of Christ. Uh, the trumpet angels of Christ. Remember the Apostle Paul said uh, in the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, he says, at the last trump. It's going to be a marvelous thing that's going to take place. This is not some. This is not a choir playing or praise team playing. Playing. This is some things that will begin to happen in the spiritual dimension. A trump. Trump, a trump is an announcement. It's an, an alerting, an alarming. It's a. Um, it's a motivation in the sense that it. It, 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 it causes the people to come together, the uh, uh, mobilizing. Uh, that's what a trumpet is. That's what the trumpet did in the Old Testament and what the trumpet does in the New Testament. Mobilizes, alarm, alerts, uh, calls the people to get in rank, ready to, to move forward, or causes the people to stop and to set up their tents at that place. See, there's spiritual significance to the trumpet. Not just that it has a sound that reverberates, which I believe it does. There is a reverberation sound, a spiritual sound that that cla- that, that that clashes and crashes things in the spirit uh, when when God ordains or orders certain things to take place. Well, this particular place in Scripture we're about to read from is a place called the fifth trumpet. The fifth trumpet. It uh, uh, um, uh, Paul said. Uh, that some things are going to take place at the last trump. Well, if things are going to take place at the last trump, most of us don't even know that there's more than one trump. Well, Paul signifies it there in 1 Corinthians that things will take place at the last trump. And uh, the Bible said Jesus himself is coming back with the trump of God, the trump of God. And so the thing is, is that, now, 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 don't anybody say, Apostle Snooks is endorsing Donald Trump. I didn't. I'm talking about trumpet. I just, I just popped in my head. You're saying Trump. <laughs> no, no, this is not about the fifth Donald. This is about the fifth. Uh, oh, forgive me for that. <laughs> Going over into that area and whatnot. But, um. This particular segment of scripture is about the fifth trumpet. Now I'm going to read it. I'm start at verse one, chapter nine, verse one, and I want to show you something that that is a modern day representative representation of a seal to the people of God. Remember, they came out of Egypt, and the 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 the, the, the instruction that God gave them. Uh, if you followed it, it it was like a stamp, a seal on your house, a stamp that when the death angel saw it, he had to pass over it. And 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 and, and so we call what Israel or the Hebrews did was stamped or sealed themselves by the instruction of God, they stamped and sealed themselves. <clears throat> Boy, that's a good word. I'd love to just preach, stop right there and just preach for two hours. 
but it can't today. And so, um, so Revelation 9, chap chapter 9, verse 1, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And let me just kind of tell you what I'm not teaching. I'm not teaching about a time when cataclysmic uh, meteors and stars and all of those things uh, I mean, real, real stars, uh, the science stuff, you know, will fall to the earth. The earth will be hit by a meteor. And I'm not talking about that. That, um, that That's a revelation that some have of this particular uh, segment of Scripture. But that's not where I'm going with it. I'm going to be staying mostly into the spiritual uh, component of, of what I see the Scripture saying from a spiritual basis. Because I believe that it's a spiritual thing that it's talking about. The trumpet is a spiritual thing in the spirit dimension that's taking place. And if you don't know what's going on, you'll be in 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 in, in the season of it. But but and it'll be all around you. But you won't even know what's happening because you don't understand that it's a spiritual thing that's taking place, like the veil of the temple uh, being torn. Most people don't know that there is no such thing as, you know, the compartments of the holies of holies. <laughs> because the, the veil is removed. That 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 which was the Holy of Holies is now um, a part of of uh, of the holy place. And soon even the courtyard is going to be a part of, of, of that space, according to the book of Ezekiel. And so the the, the, the issue is is that sometimes things are happening in the spiritual and because there's no revelation, no insight of what's going on in the spiritual, uh, 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 things are happening in the spiritual, producing natural effects, producing natural effects. And because we don't know what's happening in the spiritual, we don't understand what's happening in the natural. We try to trim the hedges of the natural, not knowing that the root system is in the spiritual. And until we, and, 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 and so that's what trumpets are. So I, 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 know, I know the teachings, and I've had people say, Snooks, you're, you're, you're believing this revelation is wrong. This is when meteors will fall to the ground. Uh, well, I, I, you can take the same fifth, uh, you can take the same fifth um, seal. Well, wait a minute, verse, uh, it's going to do it itself. Let me just read it first. And the fifth angel sound, I saw a star fall from heaven to the earth, and to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and, and there rose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the, the grass, earth, neither any green thing, nor any tree but only those men who, who did not have the seal of God in their foreheads. And I want you to pay particular attention to that one, that verse 4, where the whatever is released from that pit can hurt everything that's in existence except those that have the seal of God in their forehead. So this is like Israel, uh, the Hebrews sealed the houses with the blood, sealed the doorposts with the blood, and 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 this thing had to pass over them. Here we see an event, uh, according to the Bible, that demonic forces and fallen powers are released in a greater capacity into the earth realm, but they can't penetrate those who have this thing called the seal of God. They can touch everything else. And you'll say, no, it said the grass, the trees. I'll show you the scripture for that in just a few moments. Uh, nine five, and to them it was given that they should not hurt, not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of scorpions when it strikes a man. And in those days, men shall seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die. And death shall flee from flee from them. The shapes of the locusts were like horses prepared unto battles, and their heads were as as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were like the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, uh, and their teeth were the were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as the breastplates of iron, 
and the, and, and the sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings, stings in their tails, and, their, and the power uh, was to hurt men five months. Oh, there's such a rich, rich, rich understanding of revelation in all of these uh, things that describe those things that came up out of the pit. And once you can put them all together, time in together with other things, other places in Scripture, it gives us a beautiful picture. Verse 11. He says, and <clears throat> they had a king over them. Remember that. They had a king over them. The angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue have his name Apollyon. Now, this is what I meant when I told you in the beginning. Some t is, are teaching that this is a, a scientific uh, a, a situation where uh, 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 meteors will hit the earth or stars will begin to fall into the earth. I mean, scientific uh, stars, balls of fire. They will hit the earth. Now, I'm not saying that that won't happen. I'm not saying that there will never be an incident of an earthquake or fire and storm. I'm not saying that. Uh, meteor. I'm not saying that. Meteors have hit before. But I'm saying I don't see this as that i mean that that's what this is talking about and the reason i say that because if you go to verse 11 again it says and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the hebrew tongue is the abaddon and the name in the greek tongue is apollyon and that both of those names means the destroyer so the thing is is this is that 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 the star the star that falls is a spiritual force that opens a bottomless pit and that bottomless pit, out of that bottomless pit uh, comes, out of that bottomless pit comes a force called the destroyer into the earth. And, 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 and as that destroyer begins to go forth into the earth, that destroyer has a king over them. And that king is, his name is the destroyer. See, why are you going to call a meteor? Uh, who has an army of followers? Now, when the when the, the star is released, when this power is released into the into the world, uh, released in, in, into the pit. Now, you have to understand this because this is this is going to be something powerful here, and and it's uh, relative to its manifestation in the world. So, when that force is sent into that pit, it it says it didn't say out of the pit came demons. That's not what it said. It said. Verse uh, three, and there came out, well, verse two, and he opened the bottomless pit and there rose a smoke out of the pit. There was a smoke that came up out of the pit. Now, this is a very important thing because uh, we know that, that, that the presence of God we call a cloud. The presence of God is likened unto a cloud and the cloud of his presence. We can sometimes feel it. We know sometimes when we when it's when it's present with us, and we can even see the cloud many times as it is uh, uh, present to us. But this one says that that this pit was opened up, and smoke rose up out of the pit. It's not a cloud; it's smoke, and so that is is indicative of a presence being released this thing falls a spiritual power falls he has the keys to the bottomless pit but and and then he, he and, and and he has the ability to open the pit and when the pit is opened the first thing that happened is a presence appears now i want to just say that many of our philosophies and our ideologies today are nothing but the groundwork to lay the, the, the groundwork and foundation to that, that has been laid uh, so that the presence of the uh, uh, presence of, of, of the enemy from the pit can appear. Let me say that again. This is a very important word. Many of our philosophies, ideologies, and many of the things you somebody say, "Well, you don't tell me how to think," and you don't tell me. See, many of our foundations. Much of our foundation in life, sometimes in culture, uh, uh, in song, in acting, and dancing, and all the many, 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 much of those things are laying the foundation that a presence. You can't keep believing, praise God, in in uh, 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 so much negative 
uh, power, forces, and energy before, praise God, that that energy begins to turn into some kind of manifestation. And whatnot. That's that's not the way this the, the invisible spiritual dimension works. It's going to to manifest itself. So the issue is again. Smoke came up. The presence, uh, the found, the f- philosophical, foundational ideologies that are in the earth. It's a, it, 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 the smoke came forth from the pit. The smoke, the presence came forth. Then and then it goes on to say, and out of the presence came beings out of the presence came uh spiritual beings but then it was told that they could not touch hurt harm anything uh verse four and it was commanded them that they could not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but those only those men which have the seal of God in their foreheads. Don't touch anything except those men that don't have the seal of God. Uh, so they say, oh, I got you now, apostle. That says don't harm the trees and don't harm the grass. Look over in Isaiah 61, verse 3, where Jesus is, uh, where the Spirit of God begins to, to, to teach us. And the prophet says, uh, you know, the first verse, uh, the f- verse one says the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he's, and then he says to do this, to do that. And in verse three, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to appoint them unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So here's a place where the people of God are considered to be trees. And so John picks it up, uh, 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 or or, or the planting of the Lord. And he says, and it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men. The things that are released from that pit, the presence that comes up, the presence that comes up and out of the presence is demonic beings. And they're, they're, they're given this ability to hurt and to, to uh, uh, um, they're given this ability to hurt. And I, I don't have time to go into all of that ability to hurt. But here, here, here's, here, here's what I want to leave you with today. Here's what I want to leave you with today. Those things, the presence that we laid the foundation for the presence. That's why the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it were out of it are the are the uh, issues of the forces of life come up. He said, so guard your heart. Don't let the foundations of of the presence of the enemy and 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 the presence of the enemy will come through selfishness flesh and 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 many 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 other things because because uh uh, uh then those things can uh, they they can lay foundations for demonic beings the presence which is foundational, uh, the the word of the, the word of repute, the word of refuting God's word, uh, Babylonian mentality. I'm going to build my own tower to the sky. I will not be captured by the things of God. I will not serve. See, don't allow those things because that that foundational that foundational uh, 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 manifesto. That that foundational uh, philosophy will create a presence that will uh, invite beings. And that's what we we've done in, in many cases. But here's the good news, beloved. As we come to this season of Easter and as we come to this uh, 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 celebration of Passover, that God has given a word for us. And that word is praise God. That the Apostle Paul said it very clear in First Corinthians. He says, Jesus, or he says, I will pass over. He says, uh, for even Christ Jesus is our Passover. Now, it's one thing to commemorate the old Passover. But it's another thing 
to find a deliverance from things going on in our generation. That's another thing altogether. To get a Passover anointing, to get a glory of God anointing for things that are going on in our generation is a, is a miracle of God. I want to lead you to that. Uh, uh, I, 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 I need to say one other thing to you. And that thing, it says, the teaching says, don't touch anything in the earth that only those men, only that grouping that do not have the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, I wanted to talk this morning about the seal of God in our foreheads, but I don't have time to go into all those things this morning. Uh, maybe next Sunday we'll get back into it again if you and if, if these things are, are blessing you then stay tuned we'll get back into it we'll call this part one of of the, of the uh, Passover for our day and um, but the seal of God I, I, is so much to teach to teach the sixth seal in Revelation chapter 6 uh, teaches that a sealing takes place, sealing by God, a sealing of things that are happening in modern day uh, uh, when the Antichrist arises. And, and many of us are waiting on things to, to take place, and there's a lot of things shaping up, forming up right now, especially spiritually. There's things happening behind the scenes that, that if, you, if you don't understand what's happening behind the scenes, it's very difficult for you to discern and understand what's happening on the scene and whatnot. But I wanted to talk a little bit about, which we'll get into next week, uh, the seal of God. If you don't have the seal of God, it's, 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 a, it's a problem. And that's why Jesus says, and it will be like it was in the days of Noah. If you don't have this, if you don't have this, which is an ark of your safety, getting on the boat, if you don't have this in the days to come, I know somebody can say, oh, Pastor, you're just too, look, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just telling you what the Bible says. I have not gone outside of the Bible in anything I've said. I'm too, I'm not, I'm not that smart to be able to talk outside of the Bible. But he says, he says, uh, uh, I, I, I wanted to help you to understand the seal of God and what is having the seal of God in our foreheads. What is having the seal of God in my forehead? Those are very important things. And uh, uh, one verse of scripture talks in the book of 12th chapter of Revelations. It says, we overcome by the word of the Lord and by the, uh, the, the, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. What does that mean? Does I, did I just give, uh, God, just thank God I got a new car yesterday. Is that testimony the testimony that causes me to overcome? I suspect that... Uh, <laughs> you overcome walking, <laughs> but not, but there's many people who has the testimony of the Lord and that are constantly overcoming that they don't even have a car. So that's not that's not what he's talking about. They overcame through the word of the, of the blood of the Lamb and the word of the word of their testimony. So wow, I'm excited about teaching the rest of these things, but I'm excited also to know that there is a remedy for us. There's a power. We need to stand in the gap. Stand in the gap and declare uh, that the, the, declare the seal of God on our behalf. To declare that you are that authentic, that genuine, having the stamp of God's approval. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Stand in that dimension and begin to declare. Uh, I know you might say, "How can this help anything?" It can help because the the root is spiritual. The root is spiritual. And if you don't cut it off at the root, you're not going to cut it off at the... You're not going to cut it off by just trimming the edges. Okay, we need to close and stop for today. <laughs> praise God. If I was at you know, one of my other uh, venues, praise God, I could preach two hours and you can handle it. I know some of you, my people, praise God, will say, oh, you're going too long, Apostle. <laughs> and so I need to go ahead and close out. Remember, praise God. Uh, uh, well, before that, let me pray with you. Father, thank you. 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless the people today, God, as I know that you have. I pray that the word will find a place in the hearts of, 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 of someone listening. And I pray that they would understand this teaching, uh, that it's not trying to take the place of the blood of Jesus. It's not ty- trying to take place of the glorified body of Jesus Christ. But it's, a, it's, it's an alarming and alerting us to this place uh, 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 of security and safety, even in the times and the seasons that we're in. When so much is going on, God, I thank you for, uh, there's a corporate anointing. And I pray even for our space, God, our region, uh, uh, the, 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 our cities, our states, our nations, and for the entire earth, oh God. I declare the kingdoms of this world have become your kingdoms and of, uh, 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 kingdoms of, your, of you, dear Lord, and, and of your Christ. And I bless you. God, we have been birthed of the church uh, overcome to this place and we stand seated in and with Jesus Christ at the at the in the in the heavenly dimensions and we bow before you and we bow before him declaring decrying his worthiness in Jesus now let the heavens uh, be open to our plea we bless you God we bless you and we give you all the glory the honor and the praise we thank you that we're healed in you we're delivered in you we're set free in you. We're blessed in you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise God again. We thank God for the opportunity on this morning. Thank God for the time we spent together. We just praise God. We want you to continue to remember, praise God. If you have, a, we have a Sunday morning broadcast, but also a Tuesday uh, evening broadcast at 7 p.m. Again, we see the same coordinates. And then also on Monday night, we have an intercessory prayer with Pastor Elaine Brown at 7 p.m. You can reach uh, reach us at 774-267-2796 and uh, call in and we'll pray for you. Uh, I'll pray with you. Uh, I believe God to carry you uh, uh, to, to, to bless you. Remember the, the, to, to, to be a blessing, praise God to the Everlasting Gospel Kingdom Ministries. Uh, you can do uh, 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 at our PayPal coordinates or at our uh, uh, Cash App coordinates. And we know that, that, that uh, we're good ground, that the Lord will bless you uh, as you see fit to, to, um, to, 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 to intercede or seed into in Jesus' name. So uh, thank you again, praise God, for allowing us to, to come into your, into your life and to speak into your life. And uh, we pray that something's been said to bless you. And we give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. We say, remember, you're the blessed. You'll never be the curse. You're the head. You'll never be the tail. Above, you'll never be beneath. The Lord has uh, commanded a word unto you. That word has gone forth out of his mouth, and it shall not return unto him void. But it will accomplish the thing that he sent it to do. You're the apple of God's eye. And God loves you. Be blessed, my beloved. We'll see you next time uh, as the Lord wills. We say shalom. Have a blessed week in Jesus' mighty name. Shalom.